First I saved up 1.7 million action points to win a KVK honor push. Then I used the speed ups and resources I got there to compete on a Zenith of Power event for a legendary city theme. Then I used more than 3000 legendary commander sculptures to upgrade my open field marches. And finally I used 560 legendary materials to upgrade their equipment. Everything I did, I did it for this KVK. It was a strife of the eight, housing four Imperium and many smaller kingdoms. The fighting kingdoms were divided into two big alliances. The opponent side consisted Camp Wind, Camp Greenwood and Camp Daybreak. At Camp Wind there was the Imperium 1302, housing the two big alliances Duck and Song. At Camp Greenwood there was the also Imperium 1960, housing the Osiris League winner and one of the most powerful alliances in the entire game, 60 GT. And at Camp Daybreak, there were the two also formidable kingdoms, 1236 and 2361. On our side we had Camp Midnight, Camp Fire, Camp Earth and Camp Water. At Camp Midnight, there was the Imperium 1008 and Kingdom 2021. At Camp Fire, we had the also Imperium 1307, housing the famous alliance 1AVG. At Camp Earth, we had the powerful 1607 and 1959. And finally, at Camp Water, it was us. The awesome 1077 and 2259, sandwiched between the two Mega Imperiums. Oh, and there was also 2033 and 2142 in the left middle of Camp Thunder. But they weren't part of any alliance and just spent the rest of the KVK having a civil war. I was on 115 million power, 1.4 billion kills and 9.4 million dead. I knew that these stats were not that great so I was ready to improve them. It was the day of the opening of the PES 4, the day when finally all fights began. It was only a few weeks after the Zenith of Power event where I won the infantry city thing. And this was the very day when I spent all those heads and materials I showed in the previous videos. I had no reason to hoard anymore, it was time to go all out. I had two goals for this KVK. The first one was to send all those millions of T5 troops I trained for the Zenith to Valhalla. And my second goal was to get 1 billion kill points in this KVK to reach 2.4 billion overall kill points. No more hoarding, no more saving up. I was ready to use all my speed ups and resources until I had nothing left. And then the PES 4 has opened. Our camp's leadership has decided to take the north passes and confront the camp wind. Knowing that 60 GT on the south would be too much to handle, we aim to make a stand in zone Villa Villa. It was them and us. And they had overwhelming numbers against us. Our alliance FCN had 14.4 billion power and our ally NB51 had 11.2 billion power. Against Song's 15.8 billion and Duck's 15.1 billion powerhouses. Our opponent had many fierce warriors, countless whales with nearly unlimited amount of resources and speed ups to kill, and of course nearly maxed crystal tech. While on our side most people had very poor crystal tech, including myself. We were outgunned, outnumbered, outmanned, but not outplanned. The passes have opened and so came the lag. After going through a beautiful powerpoint slideshow, we rode out to face our opponents. The plan was to use the terrain to our advantage, to make it difficult to the enemy to advance. We started to build a front line along the river, to make a stand where is the most advantageous for us. As they say, if it's unavoidable to engage an enemy more powerful than you, make sure you engage them on your terms and not theirs. Camp Wind was quickly building their flags towards our lines and the first open field clashes have already begun. I was using 5 full T4 armies led by my newly upgraded and improved commanders and I was honestly pleased with the results and reports. Then even before our flags would start to touch, Camp Wind has quickly realized that we were building to defend, so they chose to go on an aggressive offensive. Alliance Song has dropped their first fort, right at the left side of our defenses. They murdered both up under the building fort and the first big open field battle has begun. I joined the front line with all my 5 marches to help to break their murder ball. Soon we managed to push them back but they quickly regrouped under their fort and charged at us. The lag made it incredibly difficult to control our marches and by the time you realized that your march was being focused it was either too late or too laggy to retreat. The battlefront under their building fort looked like a clash between two end colonies that are fighting for resources. We kept trying to push them back but there were too many of them and they were very strong. It seemed like there was nothing we could do to stop them from finish building that fort right in our front line. 
but as they say, no battle plan survives the first contact with the enemy. In the meantime, they moved a massive army to the right side of our defenses and surrounded our newly dropped ACN fort that was supposed to serve as a defensive wall between our and their territory. And soon, their flags have finally arrived, and so did the first rally. It was an XY Nevsky rally against our Zenobi of Flavius garrison. The fight for the fort has begun, and they immediately started to swarm alongside the rally. It was really laggy and very hard to see because of their swarm, so it was very difficult to reinforce the fort. Our king, Fire Lord Ozai, has launched a counter rally, and after a nearly 20 minutes long siege, their rally was defeated. While our garrison lost 4 million troops over the 3.7 million, that was just the rally report, not counting their dozens of T5 infantry marches that died swarming our fort. For me personally, this rally cost 126,000 T5 infantry. That was a beautiful start, but this was just the first rally that would be followed by hundreds of more. With that, we managed to finish building the fort, the defensive line was looking better, but Camp Wind has continued their aggressive push, building flags from all sides to encircle us. Soon, more and more of our territory started to touch, so they could start to rally many of our flags. The fight for the strategical points have started with the Gilgamesh Henry rally against our Amanitor Artemisia flag. While the siege was on, many more flags have been put under pressure as well. A Paco Harald rally has been launched against the flag next, where we defended with a Jodviga YSS. And multiple x Nevsky rallies have arrived against another flag, where we also defended with a Jodviga YSS. But we managed to defend against most of their attacks, trading positive in most occasions. In the meantime, the enemy was unforgiven, and their whales have easily swarmed down smaller cities that didn't teleport on the right territory. The rallies have continued on multiple flags and forts, and our side has answered with our own rallies on their flags, creating a lot of casualties on both sides. They were slowly encircling us, and we had to start to withstand multiple rallies on even more flags and key locations, while trying to reinforce our own rallies against their garrisons. Their field presence was overwhelming, so we had to resort to the guerrilla warfare, jumping in and out from cities using hit and run tactics, utilizing our own territory buffs against their better KDK tech to damage their open field marches. They kept up the pressure by keeping all our flags under constant siege, with some rallies lasting over an hour, making it very challenging for us to be able to mend every flag properly. It was rallies upon rallies, counter rallies on their rallies, their counter rallies on our counter rallies, but we kept on defending. Some sieges have ended with some incredible reports, but some also ended with some heavy losses, with many rallies ending with this amazing fate changer from Lilith. Nice try, but I'm not buying it. Their rallies were strong and their swarms were persistent. Their attempt to break our defenses have continued through the second day of the battle as well, which was also the day of the kill event. So as always on this day, the fights were more intense. K-77 needed more than just overwhelming discipline and self-respect. We needed a hero, a legend, a being whose jawline was so sharp that he could cut a mountain in two. The legendary pink hero of FCN, our king, Fire Lord Ozai. He has teleported off territory to catch the attention of the enemy and to take off some pressure from the flags. Now I know what you are thinking. How could he defend against such reckless hate? Well, he was designed for this. And he was not alone. He had the entirety of FCN behind his back to reinforce him. And he did what he does the best. He got imprisoned, rallied, swarmed, muted on chat and later on exiled as well. All within one hour. Just another day for our fearless leader. By then, they have completely encircled us, so they could begin to double and sometimes even triple rally our defensive lines. We kept on defending, but soon, flags have started to fall on our ally side. They kept on double rallying their flags and we were there to help reinforcing and garrisoning them, but even with our combined effort, eventually more flags started to fall to their unforgiven attacks. During this time, the fight to regain our open field has begun, but we only managed to gain partial success before they took it back. But even though they overpowered us on the field, they had a really hard time taking down our flags. But then, everything fell apart. Somehow, they managed to drop a fort in the middle of the tiniest gap of our defense. We had no choice but to go on the offensive before it's finished. But even if it was inside our own territory, rallying it down was incredibly difficult due to their extreme number of marches protecting it. Sending high damage rallies would resort in them swarming it down. So we had to go with the rallies that they couldn't swarm so easily. 
our back-to-back -back rallies have started on the fourth, with Ozai rallying from the left using cavalry and our champion Insane Ooze rallying from the right using infantry. In the meantime, having them on the middle of our territory gave us a good opportunity to ambush their marches. I was burning through the healing speedups fast and quickly have burned through 7 million food and wood I originally had as well, so I had to start to open up more and more resource items, but I was gaining a lot of kill points as well and also could send many of my T5 troops to Valhalla. By this time, I was already over 1 million T5 death. We kept on rallying their fort, but by the time we managed to take down their garrison, the fort was already built. With all forts and flags across the battlefield done building, the front line has now been established. By the third day, the rallies have quieted down a little bit, and I got to focus on the field fights a little more once again. Found a really great strategic point. It was a bridge they used to send reinforcements to the eastern side of the front, and it gave me a good opportunity to ambush them. With the bridge pushing all their marches into one spot, it was a real feast for AoE commanders. I managed to get some really nice open field reports with my T4 marches against their T5s, and was getting kill points real fast. Then the rallies on our flags have continued. Double rallies and of course swarms with no regards to casualties. I was already on 1.4 million T5 dead troops. Try to guess what the garrison meta was this time? We managed to rally down many of their out of territory cities. But to take their resources sometimes we had to use some ninja tactics. They had the field so we couldn't just openly take it. Had to keep hopping from city to city using our sieges. Ninja! After this, I was already at 1.6 million dead troops and 200 million kill points, but I was completely out of resources as I burned through well over 1 billion food, but only on my main account. To the farms! Welcome to the Fruitopia, my colony of fruit suppliers where I log in every once in a while to gather resources for my main account. I teleported back to our kingdom and I began to transfer all my resources from my farms, which went completely without any trouble. A verification pop-up window after every 8 transfers? Isn't it fun? After 1000 verification windows and millions of dead brain cells later, I drained my farm accounts and I was ready to go back to the front line. I had again 728 million food and 655 million wood. The two resources I was burning up the most, by this time we have lost a significant amount of territory. Our front line along the river was no more and we pulled back to build a new line of defense behind this barbarian keep. But the lost battle is a battle one thinks one has lost. Even if we were to be pushed back to our zone, we weren't to lose our will to fight. Our goal was to take down as many enemy soldiers as we can, to weaken our opponents and to make it easier for our allies to clash against them when the next zone opens. Rallies have begun on our remaining flanks, they started to push our new defensive lines and we were rallying back at them to divide their focus. We still had a fort up in the north that protected us from being pressured even more, so they were going for it. It was really hard to defend due to the lack of space. Heavy field fights have begun once again, but here, on this narrow space, we had the advantage. The open field fights have continued through the fourth day, but by this time there were less rallies. How KVK fights usually are, after days of non-stop fights, people had to start to tend to their daily lives and work. This gave us the opportunity to push their flags a little back in their downtime and gave them the opportunity to pressure us even more during our downtime. By this time, I was already 20 million power down from where I started the KVK. I had 1.9 million dead troops and had only 191,000 T5 cavalry left. I gained 300 million kill points, which mostly consisted of T5 kills. This was also the day when the NGE event has ended and so did the KVK enemy elimination. I managed to get the 5th rank on the total score of the MGE and rank 27 on the KVK enemy elimination list scoring a total of 177.8 million kill points on the kill event and another 83.2 million kill points on the final sprint, making it a total of 261 million points on the MGE. But the end of the event meant nothing. The fights have continued. We have emptied our own flags so we could focus on a good offense. But they didn't just go on the defensive, but also started a counter-offensive against our ACM fort, which was still standing on the north. We took double rallies upon double rallies, but in the end, due to the fact that the fort was in a hard to reach place and there were not enough cities around it. It was really hard to reinforce and keep it full, so the garrison has fallen. We focused on defending the north flags again, but after failing to take down our defenses, they started to focus on the east side. 
For this, they needed to march through our territory and go between our cities, which gave us the perfect opportunity to take down many of their open field marches with city hopping and swarming from our alliance made cities. This gave us some really positive reports and many casualties on their side. But soon, they managed to drop a fort at the bottom of our territory and started to fully encircle us, sending rallies from all directions to test our defenses. But we also managed to advance on the north, burning down many of their flags and gaining more territories in return. And then, we launched a surprise attack. Our ally, NB-51, dropped the fort behind their lines, which meant that they had to start to build flanks into that direction and take it down as fast as possible. It gave us the perfect opportunity to rally down and start to burn many of their flanks at the main front line. In the meantime, I was running really low on resources once again, but I had my fam to help me out. Thank you Zai and thank you Ibra to always help me out with resources when needed. The fights have continued and it was the fifth day of war. I was at 2 million T5 death, the NB-59 4 drop was successful and they even managed to build two flags but once Camp Wind made contact with their flags they managed to destroy the garrison and started to burn it down. After this the pressure on our main front line got even bigger. They pushed back our small advances and rebuilt their lines. Double rally started to fall on our flags once again. Seeing our resilience, they seemed to change strategies. They started to drop forts all around our territory to cage us in and to prevent us from burning their flags and they are less active. They managed to random TP many of their whales into our territory, which made it difficult to send armies from one side to the other side of the battlefield to reinforce flags and rallies. Our champion, Insane Ooze, tried to rally them down, but it's almost impossible to take down a whale when he is active. The fights have continued and slowly but surely we were losing territory. I was already on 2.1 million T5 death and 1.8 billion total kill points, killing 20 million of their T5s in total. But by this time, their strategy to completely encircle us was complete and we had 5 forts all around our territory and the day of the PS5 opening was getting close, which meant that even if we managed to defend, once the PS5 opens, it would allow the still fresh and still unchallenged 60 GT to enter this part of the map and help Camp Wind to take us down, which would have been too much to handle. Our allies couldn't join the fights yet, because they would need to wait until PS6 opens. And how did that and the rest of the KVK go all around the map? I will show you in the next video. So after 5 days of non-stop fighting, we retreated back to our safe zone. There was no shame in it, we were completely overpowered, but even against such overwhelming odds, our goal was to weaken them and kill as many of their troops as possible. And at this, we succeeded. So I teleported back to the safe zone and started to focus on gathering resources and do bastion quests to improve my crystal tech, waiting and preparing for the day when we can attempt our prison break. So how did this PS4 opening manage to improve my stats? Let's get to the numbers. Before the PS4 opening I had 1.4 billion kill points. And after 5 days of fighting against max tech whales, I ended up on 1.8 billion kill points. Which means that I got 395 million kill points by killing 17.9 million of their T5s, 3.6 million T4s and a bit of lower tiers from zeroing cities. Besides getting these kills, I also managed to get 2.1 million dead troops, which consisted 456,000 T5 infantry, 1,389,000 T5 cavalry, 198,000 T5 archers, 69,000 T4 cavalry and 525 T4 archers, causing me to lose 22 million power in the process. By decreasing my power from 115.4 million to 93.4 million power, which was still far from my KVK go, but remember, this one was just the first part of the KVK. Healing all those troops cost me about 2.4 billion food, 1.8 billion wood, 600 million stone and only 190 million gold thanks to the fact that I used T4s to fight on the field and my T5s went to Valhalla instead of my hospital. As for how much speedups did I use to heal? Unfortunately, I forgot to take a screenshot of the speedups I had before the PS4 opening, so I can't give you an accurate number. If you have any question or just got anything you'd like to talk about, please don't be shy to text me in game on Discord or just in a comment under the video. Thank you for watching, here are your well-deserved fruits. Fruity, out. See you in the next video, maybe.